Welcome to the Servants of Grace podcast hosted by Dave Jenkins. Our podcast exists to provide trustworthy expository messages through the Bible and faithful answers to your theology questions. Now for today's episode, let's join our host, Dave Jenkins. Well, welcome back to the Servants of Grace Theology segment. My name is Dave, and I'm the host for this show. And on today's episode, a listener writes in, and they have a great question. And the question is, can Satan plant thoughts into a Christian's mind? Now, there's nothing in the Bible to suggest that Satan is all-knowing and everywhere present. There are zero verses that says he knows everything or that he can read our thoughts, but he's very adept at predicting human behavior because he's been around for so long. Satan can anticipate what you might do in any given situation without knowing your thoughts because of his knowledge of humankind and because he has a supernatural mind. But in terms of being everywhere present and knowing all things and being able to read your thoughts as only God can, Scripture does not support that idea at all. It never tells us that angels are all-knowing and all-present. And if a holy angel isn't all-knowing and all-present, then neither is a fallen one. So Satan can't read our thoughts, even if he's great at predicting human behavior because he's seen so much of it. People ask questions like, how do you deal with demons? And do we need exorcism to get rid of demons? Well, there's a lot of people today who say that you do. I once read a book about a deliverance ministry in which the author described a doctor who was supposedly delivered from the demon of post-nasal drip. And in this approach, whenever you think you have a demon, there's a certain magical formula you say or you run around pleading the blood, whatever that phrase means, since it's not in the Bible. The blood of Jesus has already been pled in your behalf at the time of your salvation, and that's it. The wrath of God has been finally and fully dealt with, and the wrath of God that burned against you has been removed in the sight of God. Now, there are people who advocate little formulas and seance-type practices with a Christian connotation, claiming that they can cast out demons and so on and so forth. But when you get inside the scripture, you find that dealing with the devil is really as simple as going to Ephesians 6 and putting on the armor of God. And if you're in Christ, you already have that armor on. You see, in Ephesians 6, it says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. We're wrestling against demons and against Satan. But what do we do about it? Well, the best place to find out is to read right in the same chapter in Ephesians 6. Isn't it? Notice what it says. Notice what it does not say, I mean. Go get your demons exercised with a Christian exorcism. Or go get your ongoing deliverance ministry. No. It says, nor does it say, go get somebody to cast out your demon. It says, put on the whole armor of God. And what that whole armor really consists of is righteousness. The heart of it is the breastplate of righteousness. Paul says in Ephesians 6, The key then is to live a righteous, spirit-filled life and to trust in the sovereign power of God. First, let's talk some more about this as we continue on. It's important for us to remember, as we've already talked about, that Satan is not everywhere present and he's not all at all places at all times. He cannot be in more than just one place at a time. That's what I mean. Only God is everywhere and only God knows everything. While Satan must rely on his armies of demons to do his bidding. Can, can Satan and or his demons read our minds? Well, no. Read 1 Kings 8.39. It says that God alone knows the human heart. There is no one else who has that ability. God knows what we're going to say before we can even say it. While the thought is still formulating as we see in Psalm 139 verse 4. Jesus, being God incarnate, exhibited the divine quality of knowing men's thoughts. He knew what was in each person, as we see in John 2.25 and Matthew 9.4 and John 6.64. Now, Scripture does teach that Satan is powerful. Likely, he was the highest of all the fallen angels, as he was persuasive enough to convince one-third of the angels to join him in rebellion, as we see in Revelation 12.4. 
And even after Satan's fall, not even Michael the archangel dared to confront him without the Lord's help, as we see in Jude 1, 9. Satan is the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work and those who are disobedient, as we see in Ephesians 2, 2. See, Satan's power has its limits, and reading our minds seems to be beyond his ability. It would take omniscience and all-knowingness that belongs only to God for Satan and his demons to read our minds, which they do not possess. God is the only one who knows our thoughts, and yet Satan and his demons have been observing and even tempting human beings for thousands of years. Surely they've learned a few things over the years, as I've already discussed. Even without the ability to know our thoughts, though, they can make a well-educated guess as to what we're thinking and then attempt to use that to our advantage. That is why Christians are commanded in James 4, 7, Submit yourselves then to God, before we are told to resist the devil. As Christians living in a fallen world, we are not exempt from daily struggles, often our minds the battlefield of the mind. Everything we do, every word we say, every decision we make begins in our minds. The symptom of losing the battle are, are usually manifest in mental or even emotional issues such as anxiety, disbelief, depression, anger, bitterness, condemnation. All of these hinder our communication and ultimately our fellowship with God. Scripture says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the authorities, the powers of the darkness, and the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places in Ephesians 6.12. In other words, Satan is the real enemy. The question then is, can Satan read our minds? It's an important one. It's one that we're talking about today, as it's ultimately about understanding and defeating our adversary. The good news is, the scriptural answer for this question is that Satan cannot read our minds, but he can influence our thoughts through observing our behavior. We're going to see this from further examples from scripture. In fact, let's talk about knowing Satan's limits. Unlike God the Almighty, Satan is neither all-powerful, he's neither all-knowing, nor is he all-present. And just like humans, angels are God's creatures who possess these limitations. Let's learn, for example, from the story of Job. In fact, the word Satan in the English Bible first appears in Job 1, because Job is the oldest book in the Bible. And from this narrative, the enemy's limitations are exposed. While we may not be sure of why the Lord allows Satan to be in his presence and converse with him in the first place, we can conclude that Satan is not everywhere present, as he cannot be present everywhere at the same time. Satan then was mistakenly being presumptive that Job feared God because of his protection and provision to him. Satan falsely thought that Job would curse God after all of his suffering and calamity as we see in Job 1.11. God proved that Satan was completely wrong. As Job did not sin with his lips amid his miserable circumstances as we see in Job 2.10. So it's clear, Satan is not everywhere present. Now fast forward, God restored Job's life and even blessed his latter days more than in the beginning of old and full days as we see in Job 42, 12 through 17. And here we see that the enemy's scheme to destroy Job's life was totally failed. This is why Satan is not everywhere present. Let's talk about now about Satan's influence on our mind. The human mind is a spiritual battlefield which is ultimately uh, against the liar and the father of lies, that's Satan. And in order to win the battle against the enemy, it's essential to accurately understand his limitations, that we may not ascribe too much power to him or be overly fearful of him. Satan can't read our minds. He's not everywhere present. The scriptures teach that only Jesus knows the thoughts of all people, as we see in Matthew 9, 1-4 and John 2, 24. This truth demonstrates the divinity of Christ. Besides, no one can know a person's thoughts except that own person, as we see in 1 Corinthians 2, 11. Nevertheless, we must be aware of the enemy's devices, as we see in 2 Corinthians 2, 1. Note there that the context of this verse is about forgiveness. And even though he cannot read our minds, he can still influence our thoughts and tempt us to disobey God. And so we can see some examples from Scripture where Satan tempted or even caused or influenced. 
We see this in Genesis 3, 1 through 7. Eve to eat the fruit of the forbidden tree. First Chronicles 21, 1. David to, took a census of the people of Israel. Peter to rebuke Jesus in Matthew 16, 22 through 23. Judas to portray Jesus in Luke 22, 3 through 4. Ananias and Sapphira to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep a dishonest gain in Acts 5, 1 through 11. Satan often subtly attacks believers with deception, which causes doubt, it causes denial, it causes fleshly desires, it causes discouragement, depression, and despair in our hearts and in our minds, thereby hindering both our prayer life, our communication, our fellowship with God, and with other people as a result. Therefore, to overcome our adversary, we must fill our hearts and our minds with the word of God, which bring faith, assurance, holy desires, encouragement, joy, and hope. And by living in humility and submission to God, we can resist the enemy, as we see in James 4, 7 and 1 Peter 5, 5 through 9. It's only when we abide in the word of God that we can think of whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, whatever's excellent or praiseworthy, as we see in Philippians 4, 8. That's because God's way is perfect. His word is proven, and he is a shield to all who trust in the Lord, as we see in Psalm 1830. Remember that God's word is the sword of the spirit, as we see in Ephesians 617. And one of the spiritual weapons we must take up to be victorious in spiritual warfare is the word of God. And when the war is raging in our minds, we know the enemy is attacking us. We can defeat him by using the word. And it is therefore a good practice to meditate and even memorize the word of God. We must continually abide in the Lord. If God is for us, who can be against us? As Romans 8.31 says. Now, scripture reveals that Satan is a fallen angel, Lucifer, who is not only the most prominent and the powerful in the heavenlies, but also is history's most corrupt and celestial creature who led a rebellion against his creator, creator. We see this in Isaiah 14, 12 through 21, and Ezekiel 28, 11 through 19. God created Lucifer, not Satan, with a gift of self-determination, which has been given to both angels and human beings. Lu Lucifer became Satan because he had an unbalanced mind, pride, and self-will, an unthankful mind, and an unbelieving mind, which caused him to think he could defeat God and replace him as the king of the universe. And so two suggestions have been offered as to why Satan sinned in the first place. First, he, he might have doubted God's word that he had been created and thought God was lying. Second, he thought he was jealous of man's nature, especially his provocative ability, which is something only angel, angels cannot do. And the responsibilities given to Adam, as we see in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, and Psalm 8, 3 through 6. Now, this latter thought would suggest that Lucifer did not sin until after the creation of Adam. In other words, the fall of Lucifer more likely took place between Genesis 2.25 and 3.1. Now, Jesus characterizes Satan as the liar and the father of lies. He was a murderer from the beginning, and there is no truth in him, as we see in John 8.44. Now, notice that Jesus contrasted his work and the enemy's scheme in John 10.10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Not only is Satan a liar and a murderer, but he's also an accuser of the brethren, as we see in Revelation 12, 20. Other than the devil, what else is deceitful? Well, the scriptures reveal that the human heart and mind in Jeremiah 17, 9, a charm in Proverbs 31, 30, and the counsels of the wicked in Proverbs 12, 5, are deceitful. And this means if we're not careful, Satan could use our hearts and our minds, the beauty of this world, as described in 1 John 2, 16, and the advice of the wicked to steal our joy and destroy our lives. And so we must guard our hearts above all else, as Proverbs 4.23 says, by living according to God's word, as we see in Psalm 119.9. Well, I want to thank you for listening or watching this episode of the Servants of Grace Theology segment. Until next time, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you. Thank you for listening to the Servants of Grace podcast today. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, 
leave a rating on the app, and share our episode with your friends and family. If you'd like to, you can follow us on Instagram at Servants of Grace, on Twitter at Servants of Grace, or by searching Servants of Grace on Facebook. You can also find this podcast on the front page of our website at servantsofgrace.org. 